Elaine for Two Peas in a Bucket.com, and I'm here with the March edition of 4x6 Photo Love. Since it's the third month of the year, that means we're going to scrap three 4x6 photos on our 12x12 page. And here's the look we're going to try this month. So the March idea is that we're going to use three 4x6 photos that are all the same direction, either all portrait or all landscape. And we're going to line them up across the page without any gaps in the middle. And then we're going to do three series of embellishments. A border that goes below the photos, a border that goes above the photos that includes our journaling and title, and then a very small border at the top of the page as well. So this is the first example. I'm going to walk you through a second example, and then there are plenty of different styles you can see at the end. This month, the design concept is simple. Three 4x6 photos in a line add up to a full width of a 12x12 12 12 page. Then we'll emphasize this line with three additional borders, and all the page elements will be grouped to those lines, including the journaling, title, and accents. You can, of course, turn this design on its side to use photos that are landscape rather than portrait. And you can adapt this to an 85 by 11 page one of two ways. By slightly cropping the photos so that the three images add up to 11 inches, or by leaving them full size and creating a one inch tab at the top of the page. Our guest artist this month created a page in that size, so be sure to check it out. Okay, let's get started. So here I have my three four by six photos. They're lined up straight across a 12 by 12 sheet of craft cardstock. And then I'm using the polka dot paper from October afternoon. It's called Collector's Item and it's from the thrift, store, thrift shop collection. And I have three ways I want to use that. So I've cut a wide border for the bottom of the page and a narrow border for the very top of the page. And then I'm going to punch a scalloped border to go in the middle. And this is the punch I'm using. It's a double scallop punch. It's quite a large scallop, which is lovely. And it's from EK Success. So to punch that, just line up your paper here, and then this picture shows you what you're punching. And then when you move along, you line it up with the picture. Okay. And then I'll just take that through my trimmer to cut off this piece here. And that's the piece I want for above my photos. Now, I actually think this one is a little bit too thick, so I'm just going to trim this off. I'm just going to take another row of dots off here. And before we attach these, we're going to do a little bit of stamping just at the top of the page here. And I'm using a border stamp. It's this doily border from Studio Calico. It's available at Two Peas in a Bucket. And I've put that on a large acrylic block. And I'm going to stamp this in black, and I'm using the Jenny Bolin for Ranger Fountain Pen Black Ink Pad. Um, you can choose any color or style you like to use. I'm just going to ink the stamp, and then we're going to we're going to make a border that goes across here, but the small strip of paper is going to go on top. So this edge that is always the most difficult to get lined up, don't worry too much because that's not going to show. So you're just going to go right over to the edge. You can see where you're stamping. And press down. Now on this large block, you'll, you can laugh that I have this stamp. It's permanently stuck there. Um, so just, you can ignore that. That's clearly not an important part of the project. Um, that particular stamp is one that's very um, it's very delicate in places, and I had left it on the block for quite a while just from laziness. And when I went to take it off, it started to break, so I've just left it there. And then uh, eventually when I decide I never want to use it again, I'll take it off, but I still use it now and again. So it just stays there. It doesn't do any harm. Okay, so it doesn't matter that it's not completely perfect because we're going to cover up this top side. And I'm going to do that with a narrow strip, just add some adhesive. And then I'm going to put this at the top. I'm going to leave just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of the craft at the top, but you don't have to. If you've stamped right to the edge, you can cover it up. Okay, and that way we just have this, the, um, 
the doilies showing below. And we're going to do that same stamping technique on this border piece here. This piece is going to go here across the bottom and we can go ahead and attach that now. So I'll add some adhesive. Line it up with the bottom. And we can add the scallop strip as well. And that's going to go here at the top. I like pages like this where everything lines up because it's very quick and easy to scrub that way. Um, and now we're going to add some ribbon to cover these. Um, with all the different shades of blue, I thought I would bring in a little bit of this pink for my scarf and goggles. So I have a couple different versions. I'm going to use this one at the bottom. And this one here. The, those are both by American Crafts. Um, from different collections. This one is from the Dear Lizzie Springtime collection. This is a slightly older one, but you could use any pink rickrack or any ribbon. In, it doesn't have to be pink, of course. So just run adhesive along the back. a straight line. Use the scallops as a guide of what's straight there if you can't see because the ribbon's wide. And then the same thing here. Just run the adhesive straight onto the rickrack. Line it up. And press it into place over that edge. And then I can grab my scissors and cut these extra pieces off the side. Now, we want to make oops, We have the borders here now and we want to make a cluster here at the top that's going to have space for journaling and a title and then some embellishment that we can match here top and bottom. Now, for this layout, this summery layout, I use butterflies. For this wintry layout, I'm going to use snowflakes, but again, they're going to be punches. So I've got two different sizes of snowflake punch I'm going to use. These are both by Martha Stewart. This is this past winter's snowflake and this is the year before. But you can use any small and large or medium and large. And if I get these out of the way I can just show you. Where this size is, this butterfly was a smaller size than that giant snowflake. I used five punches but for I'm just going to use two or three across the top. So to make the cluster up here, I have three different journaling pieces. I have this note card from my mind's eye, a journaling card which was by um, Colorbach. It's a slightly older one, that one. And um, this is from the Dear Lizzie Enchanted uh, journaling pack. And so these are all going to layer up here. Now obviously this one is too big, so I'm just going to cut it in half. can use the other half later and I'm going to ink this one like I've been inking everything else. You can tuck behind the scallops or behind the ribbon. I think I'll just go with the ribbon because it's easier than that particular one. So this one is tucked behind the ribbon but it stops before I get to the um, to the stamped border at the top. This one's going to go over the note card and over the ribbon and over the photo just ever so slightly. I'm just going to line this point up with the note card but that's just up to you how you would like it placed. Oh, would help if I press the adhesive in the right spot. And then this ticket it's going to go over here with our title. I'll have to judge the placement with when we get the letters on. But there's one thing I want to do to this before um, before I add it to the page. So I'm just going to take the layout away for a second. I don't know if you can see on here. 
the card itself is white, but then I've put in a cream colored butterfly to match the hair. So what I'm going to do is um, add a snowflake here. Now the large snowflake is way too big to make this stencil, so I'm going to use this small one. And this is just scrap cardstock, and I'm going to punch a snowflake from it, but then I'm going to use this piece so that I can use this as a stencil and hold it over the top. And then I'm going to use a paint dabber. And this is the Jenny Bolin for Ranger Paint Dabber in Malted Milk. It's a nice off-white color. And then just dab it over the top. And just take that off. And then our snowflake is there. And we'll leave it to dry just a bit. These are the letters I'm going to use. They're the same letters that I used on the first layout. They're by Cosmo Cricut and they're called High Noon. They're wood grain and they're in a, a slightly more ornate font they, than the first wood grain alphabet they did. I quite like this one. Um, and you can see I've used several letters. I like to punch all the way through the backing so that I can move them around on the page and see where they're going to go because Cosmo Cricut chipboard is very sticky. So once, you're, once you add it to the layout, you're not going to easily be able to move it. I think I'm going to go with this down here. with the letters over the top. So they'll go right there. I'm going to add, um, no I'm not. I'm going to leave that right there. I was thinking about I might add a label here. To, if you want longer space for your title, you can either use this, a longer piece here or just keep adding labels for everything you want to spell, but I'm just going to leave it like that because I'll put all the other details in my journaling block there. Um, and then I'm going to cut some, punch some large snowflakes to go here. I'm going to use the the coordinating striped paper from the same collection by October afternoon. And the snowflakes here in a row, and I'm going to go ahead and go with the snowflakes straight, so they have one arm going straight up and down. They're quite even. And this piece is going to come in here. And I'll add the letter stickers or chipboard letters. And I'm just going to add one snowflake to the bottom. And the, when I used the butterflies, I had three. But with the snowflakes, I'm just going to do one. Just like I did at the top. Actually, I put this one on a pop dot to give it a bit more. So I'm just using a foam square with pop dot to give it a bit more dimension. And then I'm going to add one little bit of twine here at the top. This is Baker's twine and um, this one is by Making Memories from the Vintage Findings collection, but there are uh, various different kinds and a roll will last you a long time, so don't worry. I'm just going to um, staple this into place. I'm going to add my journaling here.
I like the Precision Pens um, by American Crafts, and I use the .3, or is it .03? .03 in um, both black and brown for almost all my journaling. Two last little bits of finishing for this page. I'm just going to add some brown ink to the edge of the cardstock. If you like, um, if you like the ink to be darker, you can do this on the table instead of up off the edge and um, put pressure on it and that will make the edges darker. I like it quite light like that. And then a little bit of paint splattering. I'm going to use the same paint that I used here. It's the Jenny Bolin paint dabber, except this time I'm going to open it. And I'm going to use a, a dry, coarse paintbrush. Nothing fancy. And I'm just going to get a little bit of paint on the brush. And then I'm just going to splatter it with my finger over the areas of embellishment. Now, if you don't want to get any paint on your photos, just cover this part up with paper. It's fine. Um, I, once you have been uh, splattering your paint a while, you'll get an idea with your paintbrush of where the paint's going to go. And I don't mind if I have a tiny little bit there, but obviously I wouldn't want a big, uh, a big splat of paint on top of the pictures. And then it's all done. I leave that to dry. And that's the finished page. So there's the winter version. And here's the spring or summertime version. Thanks for joining us this month, and I'll see you next time for four 4x6 photos. <laughs>